Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I am Noelle and today we are making hat boxes with Lynn McMasters. <laughs> Lynn is a little camera shy, so you're probably not going to see her very much, but you will be hearing her voice all the time during this because she is showing me how to make hat boxes and I am showing you how to make hat boxes at the same time. All right, so we have a whole bunch of options here for you. Lynn has a step-by-step -step instructions on her website in text format so if you need that they are available i will link them down below for you she has three hat patterns they can kind of be adjusted though so like if you get one that's close you can fix the sizes so let me just show you about the sizes okay this is our pattern for today and it is a 12 inch around hat box this is for my 1940s hat that she made me for the cruise it can be anywhere from five to ten inches tall it doesn't really matter we also have a pattern on her site for this one which i know does not look massive because there's no scale here but this is a whopping 16 inches wide it can be anything from five to ten inches tall so it's a pretty big box for you if you have many hats that you want to put in there that's fine okay so this hat box is pretty huge as you can see you can get several hats in here there's several goodies in this box right now if you have a really big hat that's great for this one but also you can nest together a bunch of hats if you need to and then we have this guy which is 18 inches around also there's a pattern on her site for that but it's like two inches tall and this is really great for bergere this is vaguely like sewing so the first thing you have to do is cut out your pattern lynn has made these all so that they're bends instead of having to cut out a circle which is apparently significantly harder so we're going to start by cutting out our pattern this one is on the site it is a tape together pattern you guys all have seen me do tape togethers before so you know what that looks like okay so this particular pattern not all of them but this particular pattern is made to go on the size of a mat board you can get it one mat board in so that is very pleasant this is a museum board you can also use this you can also use archival board if you want to go for the best possible conservatorship of your hats you want to use museum board if possible this museum board is like 30 by almost 40 so it's a little bit bigger than you need and then you want to use acid free paper for sure if you can Okay, so this long piece was at the top of the pattern and this piece was at the bottom. And normally you'd have to essentially cut two pieces of board out and then join them together, which is why you can kind of see through here that there's a join piece here. You can skip that if you use this museum board. It is exactly the right width. Now we're gonna do the marking step, which is largely straight lines, so that's really good. And we're, then we're gonna cut. And the cuts are a little bit scary because this board is very thick. But we're gonna show you some tricks to get through that. Okay, so we have taped two pieces of board together, as you can see, and that's just so that when we cut it, it doesn't cut through to this table. We will also be using a cutting mat underneath it. Highly recommend that if, you know, this is wasteful if you don't have an extra board, but put something underneath it for sure. Definitely a cutting mat, maybe even something else so that you make sure you don't cut up your table. Okay, you can see this line. We, we decided to go with nine inches. So this line is just nine inches all the way across and I have marked it so that I can score it. And then in order to save some cuts, and we're not trying to save board here. So if you're trying to save board, that's on you to figure out where this goes. But we're saving these two cuts because we're gonna just make squares to start with. So we're gonna mark this edge and this edge, and we're doing it on both corners here so that we can just cut out big squares and then we'll cut off the 45s. Okay, so as you can see, I have marked all the sides, the top line and this line, but then I've also drawn these lines so that we know where to cut later. We also wanted to make the point that you should definitely use a pencil to do this or an erasable pen because you might want to erase this. So like we will erase these lines later so that she could use this board here. Also, it's very important to have a ruler that doesn't slip. So like not a quilting ruler unless you have a non-slip surface one because you, when we cut this, we're going to cut it against the ruler and we really, really, really don't want that to slip. Okay, Lynn is doing the first square because I'm terrified. We are using a box cutter, a utility knife kind of situation. It would be better if you had a ruler that was twice as thick as this 
You're also not trying to go all the way through. You're trying to go through about a third of it and you're gonna do three cuts. She's not even going all the way down the ruler, as you can see. She's holding it as hard as she can right there and then pushing down to get through it. And as soon as she does that, she's gonna move down so that she can hold pressure on the ruler closer and then just stick your knife in that groove and cut along the rest of that line. Okay. Lynn is telling me always keep the ruler over the good, good part, not on the other side of the line. You always wanna cover the part that you absolutely do not wanna cut. Cause if you go off the line here, whatever, you can recover. But the second you go off the line on this side, you got a problem. Okay, so we just cut it out. I cut the second line and it was not that hard. Don't push that hard, just cut more more passes. Try to stay in the groove each time. You can definitely feel it when it goes in the groove. We're gonna go cut these all off camera because I'm stressed out. So this cut right here is essentially a left-handed cut, which makes it pretty difficult for me. Like normally I would probably try to cut away all the rest of the stuff first before I cut that one. But because Lynn is left-handed, we have a left-handed cutter, which is fun. So we have also determined that it's maybe not the best idea to have two stacked on top of each other because you almost can't tell when you get through it. Whereas, if you had a cutting mat underneath it, like when she does the second cut, she can feel when she gets to the bottom and she knows when she's cut through a lot easier. So take that for what you will. Also, I asked her about how exact the science is and she did say like there's some slot built into this. So like do it as best you can, but it does not have to be perfectly precise, which is good. All right. So we have these two pieces and then the one long piece instead of a long piece and a short piece because we combined them. Uh, now I'm going to go cut off these corners. Now we need to cut out these little pink areas. This seems like it's going to be potentially the most annoying part. So how I'm doing it is I'm going to use my awl and make a dent here and then mark here and here and then draw it with a ruler and cut it out after I take the pattern off on all of them. You could also make a pattern of this and just stick it on there and cut along it many options for you but basically you got to get rid of this pink stuff okay i have drawn in the little voids so that i can go through and cut them out i'm going to use apparently kitchen shears for this. That does not stress me out at all. It totally stresses me out. You may have been able to see in the footage that I started far, far back. You don't want to end with the point on the tip of your, your scissors. You could use the, the blade if you want to, but it's a bit much. So yeah, you want to cut it so that when you hit this little dot that you made with the awl, you can feel it pop into that and that's when you need to stop. Alrighty, as you can see, I have drawn from dot to dot. Now this is going to be the scoring line and the scoring line is done with an awl and a ruler. You do not have to draw this line. I just like a little comforting safety blanket here of having this so I can see it later. And when you score, do not come in straight up and down, score on the side. Okay, so we have this scored and now we are going to fold these up so they all go up and they meet. You can fold them down if you want. You can fold them in any way you want. I prefer this to be the inside. So if you want to fold it down, flip it over and fold it down like over the edge of a table. This table is rounded, which is not going to help me, but you could use a ruler. You could also slide your mat out if you want to, to go ahead and fold this at a 90 degree angle. And then you're going to use tape. It's good to have white tape. You want white tape that is not hard to reposition or is too sticky. So this is lab tape that you can get. I'm sure you can order this on Amazon. 
This is artist tape, which you can probably also order on Amazon or get from your art store. White tape is the one that you want. You're just holding this together because really the fabric is going to be the thing that holds the whole thing together at the end because you're going to wrap the whole thing in fabric later. Okay, so now we're going to take this tape and we're going to cut off eight pieces about three inches long. So you can go ahead and tape all of the corners up and you're going to have it so that you start at the bottom towards the flat part of the, the lid and make it go up and then wrap around. What we have found is if you take your tape and you put it kind of along the bottom, but only on one side of it, that's sticking up over the top, and then you put the corners together so that they're nice and tight, and then you wrap it onto the other one. Bring it up and over, make sure to get it into that, that corner right there, and you'll have a better time of it. It's good to get this nice and bent before you start. The first one's kind of tricky, so if you have to go back and redo that one, don't freak out. It's the whole point of this tape is you can take it off if you need to. And then you should have an octagonal box top. Every person needs two of these plus one inch extra on all edges of fabric. And then you need this guy plus one inch of fabric on one edge because one of them is going to get folded over and under for the clean edge but the bottom edge isn't going to get folded up and over it's just going to be flush because that's going to sit inside this pan here you can use any fabric you want you can even use stiff paper uh, this is quilter's cotton which is good if you use a thick fabric you're going to have to make sure that your folds still work after you cover the bottom. So we're covering our bottom first just to make sure everything works out. So we're going to pin it down and then we're going to add an inch. We're going to draw lines to add an inch all the way around to it and then cut on those lines. And then you need to cut every corner from here up to this point. So we're just cutting up to that same point that we put the all in earlier and you're doing it on every corner. All right, I have two octagonal plate pieces that are one inch larger than the pattern with slits cut in them for the two top, like the top and the bottom. I have one piece that is 10 inches, this is nine inches, so I have one that's 10 inches because you're only going to wrap around the top. The bottom is going to be aligned along it and then this is slightly larger than that. And I guess I'll we'll probably cut off an edge whenever we get to that. Okay, this is white glue, acid neutral white glue. You get this at um, the art store or probably Amazon. This is what we're going to glue the fabric on with. You're also going to need a brush. This is the one I'm using. It's about an inch wide. Okay, so now we're going to glue. We have aligned our bottom piece. This is the bottom that we're going to do right now. We have chosen the fabric. We're going to make sure the fabric is right side down and that you're gluing to the wrong side of the fabric. You're gonna align all of your corners to all the little cuts. And this does take a little bit of fiddling, so make sure you get there with it. And we are not gluing the top of the fabric, or the bottom, you know, the, the fabric to the, the actual large flat plane. We're only gonna do the sides up and over. And the first four that we're gonna do are the cardinal four. So do those four on the straight grain and cross grain first. All right, so we're gonna, Basically, brush the glue on the entire surface and pick it up. You can wait. If you've got really thin fabric, you should wait a while because the glue might might come through. And we do have thin fabric and yeah, we did we not have. wait, just FYI. Yeah, a little bit came through right there, but it shouldn't be, be fine. Okay, so if you have a little bit of extra glue on, you're going to go ahead and put it on the edges there of the fabric to get them to go up and over. So we come onto the side then. Come onto the side. Then we're going to tip up the box like this, and we're going to go ahead and brush it on into the inside as well. And then go ahead and flip that fabric 
right over and hold it down. I'm gonna get, no, I'm gonna. Voila. Yeah. And just keep working it. And if you need to work out some kinks, you can work out your bubbles now. And then do all four corners of cardinal four first. Okay, so it's very important when you get to that second side to like give it a little tug and make sure it's all smoothed out before you tuck it up and over. Try to do that without coming off of your points. So what you're going for is like a perfectly smooth top here. In order to make the seams not flare out, when we put the other four, so the first four we just did fully normal, what we're going to do is glue down the edges as you can see here. And Luna's going to go ahead and glue hers down so that they are straight edges. And that'll make all of these seams on the box be straight. So you'll get a finished edge that is also covered underneath. And then proceed to glue in the exact same fashion as before. So you fold it. When you fold it, you make sure you get down to the cut right there and that you press this straight. So it's kind of like that. It's a little hard because it's on the bias, but there, it's like that. Same here. Just a little bit of glue. You don't need a ton. No, don't like very... wet your fabric down. Yeah. Just a little there. Maybe even stretch it a little because we're working on bias now. So there. So now there would there totally finished edges that you get like that. Just looks great. So perfect. All right. The next thing we're doing is checking the pattern because if you have too thick a fabric, it makes it so that your lines don't fit between the folds. If your lines don't fit between the folds, this piece doesn't fit inside this, which it's going to at the end. So yeah, that's going to essentially turn into an octagonal, the side of the box. So we're just checking that it will fit. And if it doesn't fit, you need to remake folds in your pattern. Oh yeah, that's before that's you score the big one. So you, you can, can really tell when you fold it that these will fit in between here. And this is a fine pattern with this fabric. If we use really thick upholstery fabric or something, it might have been off. All right, I have taped this pattern onto the board, and now I'm gonna make marks at all of these lines, and then I'm gonna draw the line, and then I'm gonna score the line, and I am gonna cut off this little edge right here also just make sure you do that okay so this guy is scored i didn't draw all the lines i just scored it now i'm bending it into a circle okay i'm bending it into an octagon to be fair but i'm doing all the bends right now all right so i temporarily taped this together it's kind of a hack tape job but i just wanted to make sure it would fit you do a little dry run before you glue this so it fits pretty much perfectly in there so i'm gonna go ahead and glue this little tab situation to the inside so that we can then go ahead and cover this guy. Okay, we are going to significant amount of glue on this tab. And then we are going to hold it together with hem clips. If you don't have hem clips, you can clip the top and bottom. But you got to make sure that middle part stays engaged as well. So if you had it like on a piece of white paper or some freezer paper or something, you could just like stick a book on it, honestly. If you flipped it sideways. So... Do what you need to do to make sure that this gets clamped shut and stays shut because this is what's holding the octagon together currently. Okay, so we have the octagon. I'm going to pick a side that is not actually where it's sealed together here. And uh, right around the middle, like slightly offset from the middle, I'm going to glue all along one side and attach the fabric. And then from there, I'm going to glue along the bottom the inch that this is deep. This is like an inch and a quarter, I think. Um, so you have about that much space to glue along the bottom and put your fabric and pull it so it's nice and tight along here. You don't do the top just yet, all the way around. Okay, I've made this glue line that you can see that's about a half an inch here. Uh, this is my, I'm gonna attach the fabric here line. Enjoy your time lapse.
Okay, I'm on the last one, which is only a half one. So what I'm going to do is trim this off so that I have enough to fold over. I'm going to put some glue down, fold it over flat, and then let that dry and then glue that straight up and down on here. Now we're going to tuck it over the top here. You're going to stretch it so that it is the way you want it to be. So like I have a little wobble there, so I'm going to stretch it well. You're going to put some glue on this edge here and pull it so it's the way you want it and set it in the glue panel by panel all the way around i'm gonna wonder clip it let's talk about this for a minute you can do this any way you want this is like one method if you want to glue this whole panel down you can it's up to you it might make it janky when you put it into here because if it doesn't have a little bit of give and it needs to give to get into this bottom section it might, it might cause some problems, but and that's why we're doing this, but you can do it any way you want. You can also just wrap the whole thing in fabric, cut the bottom off afterwards, like anything you want to do to get this thing to stay together and fabric covered is fine. So we got this guy into here. It's just dry fit right now, just to make sure we could get it in and that it would work and not everything was weird. And this is very snug, so I'm very happy with that fit. You want it to be as snug as possible. It was difficult to get it in. Okay, so we're gonna put glue all the way around the edges and then I'm gonna set it back in. I know that this one goes with this, so I'm gonna try and keep that solid and then stick it back in there and try to hold it together until it glues itself shut. Lots of glue. Alrighty, so now I just need to cover the top, the same as the bottom, and then that can just set right in there with whatever hat you're gonna put in there. I'm gonna put in my 40s hat. All right, if you want to have some ribbon or this handmade <laughs> twisted rope, you can have something like this. And what you need to do is put two grommets underneath where the lid happens for sure, parallel to each other, halfway between one panel. So as you can see right here, and right here, and you could, if you wanted to, just leave it at that. But if you wanted to, you can make two more grommets. Here's one and here's one, and they are offset from each other, both uh, like vertically when, you're, when your hat box is flat like this. So this one is higher than this one, as you can see, and they are equidistant from the edge, but not centered. So this one is the same distance from here to here as from here to here. So that this locks this down and you can carry it like this. And this should tighten up along here, which it does. And you can carry the box like this. So here's a little closer look at this grommet setup. So this is the one that's parallel to the other one, and this is centered in the panel. And this one is like, you know, an inch and a half off and an inch and a half off, and then making its way down. But let me show you how the rope works because it doesn't go from here to here to here. It goes from here to here to here, which is very confusing. All right, we're gonna look at the inside of the box. So here's the one grommet side. It's knotted on the inside, that's it. And here is the opposite hole right there. And this, when you're threading it, goes in from the outside, comes through it, and then down to the very bottom hole, back out, and then back in through this middle hole. There is a setting guide for this on Lynn's site, and also worded instructions in case you need that. But Somehow I think this visual representation might be a little bit better. So this is my beautiful Berger, and it is in self-covered fabric. 
Lynn made this one for me. And this one doesn't have a covered side. The side is the distance that it would need to be. It's a two inch tall one. And each of these top and bottom are the same and they're just one inch. So that makes sense. And then the hat sits inside. And if you're clever, like Lynn, you put a little ring in there. So in case something happens, it doesn't go flying. I have ribbons that I can use to just close, keep this guy closed too. You can do two simple grommets on either side to carry it, but it's a weird one, so I wouldn't do that. If you get real fancy, you can make weird shaped boxes like this one, which I think is glorious, but also you should see what's inside this box. It's a Victorian fan. Is this like 1850s? No, it's bustle era. It's what? Bustle. Oh, era. 70s, um, 80s? 70s, 80s. Uh, mm -hmm. look at that Edwardian. look at that look at it in the light those are all hand curled feathers Lynn is meticulous Lynn loves anything like if you're just like this is so tedious I cannot handle it she's like give it to me I want it isn't this glorious she made all these flowers out of feathers this whole thing isn't this amazing it's so beautiful Man, do I want a lilac dress right now. <laughs> wow. Anyway, this is glorious. And she's got like little holder pieces in here for it. Here's the tassel. Of course, handmade tassel. Anyway, you can get real fancy with this whole situation if you want to. Right, here are the boxes that are available on her site. You can, of course, go ahead and take these and adjust the pattern if you want to. This sidewall, she has patterns up to, I think, nine inches. You can make it as tall as you want. Like if you wanted this twice as tall, you could just make the octagonal board that goes around taller. I don't know that there's a huge limit on that size. You just have to make sure that your top piece and your bottom piece can fit outside of the octagon, and then you're all good. Sometimes it just takes a little pressure. Sometimes it takes a little experimenting. Okay, Lynn is gonna go home, and I am gonna finish up the top of my box. I'll be right back with that. Ta-da! It is literally three days later. <laughs> I've been telling everyone that all I need to do is go, ta-da! <laughs> I needed to finish covering the top of this as I just told you, but I did not have any glue or a glue brush and Lynn was going to leave me some. And I was like, don't worry about it. I'll go tomorrow to Michael's and I'll get some of that glue and I'll get myself a brush and I'll make my own and you don't have to leave everything here and have me mail it and blah, blah, blah. Michaels does not carry this, <laughs> so neither does Joanne, uh, because I was using archival glue, so that's acid-free, that's not something that they carry. Could I have used Elmer's? 100%, you can totally do that. Lynn really likes it if we use archival stuff so that the hats have the best chance of not getting, like, off-gassed on or whatever, so it's fine. I got this stuff. I ordered it from Amazon. It is now a few days later and it has arrived and I have made the top of the hat box, so I feel good. And now I have glue for the next time I wanna make a hat box, which is probably gonna be pretty soon. Hat box also makes convenient camera stand, which is great. <laughs> anyway, if you liked this video, do give it a thumbs up. Leave me comments down below. Let me know what you're watching, what you're working on, what you're doing, all those things, what you're listening to. I have been listening to my podcasts a lot. I have been watching Foundation. I rewatched Good Omens. I rewatched Peaky Blinders. I am rewatching Vanity Fair on Amazon Prime. If you guys have not seen Vanity Fair with Olivia Cook, I think that's her name. She's the chick from the new Game of Thrones show. She plays old Allison. <laughs> old young middle Allison. <laughs> so yeah, she is that person. She plays Becky Sharp in Vanity Fair. It's a mini series that I think is six episodes. It is so good. It has Johnny, Johnny somebody who is in the Emma 2 2020 movie. Definitely a good watch. Do recommend. She is perfect as Becky Sharp. I just absolutely love it. The costumes are also fantastic. I'm also really excited because Ahsoka is going to come out next week on Disney Plus. That is a Star Wars thing. Have I been reading anything? No. <laughs> I have the new book from the St. Mary's Chronicles, which I am dying to get into, but I haven't been in the mental space for an audiobook recently, so I haven't been doing that. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that. So anyway, let me know what you guys are into, what you've been working on, what you're watching. I am about to film a room tour because people have been wanting to know about all the stuff on my boards 
and around the walls and stuff. So I'm going to film a room tour and give that to you guys next. I think we'll see. We will see. All right. I will see you guys next time with another video and I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye guys.